Uh, Boris Johnson has been warned by a group of foreign ambassadors that backing plans for a new coal mine in Cumbria puts him at risk of looking like a hypocrite. Uh, let's try and explain exactly what is going on here. We're joined now uh, by the co-founder of the environmental think tank, E3G, uh, and the former government advisor, of course, uh, Tom Burke. Uh, Tom, great to have you on the show this morning. Um, can, can, morning you just can you just explain e exactly what is going on here? We understand the UK's leadership role uh, in COP, fast approaching, of course, but we're opening a coal mine. What on earth is happening here? Well, I wish I, I, wish I knew. Um, Clearly, you, you have a situation in which the Prime Minister is asking people, as he is at the summit that uh, Britain is hosting today of the Powering Past Coal Alliance, they're asking people to do more to drive coal out of our economy at the same time as he's opening a coal mine himself. Now, I should think to most uh, of his peers, that's very baffling. And it certainly doesn't encourage them to treat him as a serious partner uh, when it comes to the big meeting in Glasgow at the end of the year. None of which, of course, Tom, is to say that the UK hasn't made incredible strides over the past few years in cutting reliance on carbon within the national grid. No, you're absolutely right. And that's what makes this, this mistake uh, in, a, in a way so bad, because we have really managed both to drive down our own emissions while making our economy grow at the same time. So we've proved that that can be done. And also in things like the Climate Change Act and indeed like the Powering Pass Coal Alliance, given the world a real lead. And yet it, it's a sort of mess it up for some sort of uh, uh, clearly lack of grip inside the government is, is a really bad error. And it's an error with consequences because all of the leaders that he has to get to agree at the COP in Glasgow, they've all got difficult problems at home with their own net transition. And this kind of mistake encourages their internal opposition of his peers. And that, that of course, is not welcome. I, I suppose, though, those, those who argue explicitly in, in favour of, of the coke mine in, in Cumbria point out that it's producing special coking material for use within the steel industry, boosts the UK, uh, boosts the UK end of that particular industry, reduces our reliance on importing the same material from, from overseas, reduces our carbon footprint in that regard. Uh, there, there's a case that you might be able to make for it, but the, in a sense, the substantive case uh, about that this might have a marginal benefit for uh, carbon emissions is outweighed by the real political damage that's done. You could very easily have uh, got the timing of this right so it didn't get in the way. Uh, you know, there's no uh, a sense in which a decision literally as small as this one should be having consequences for a conference as big as the one we're going to have in Glasgow at the end of the year. So again, it just reinforces that idea that there's a bit of a lack of grip uh, 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 in the Prime Minister's office. And that's something that makes other leaders feel that he may not be a reliable partner. Uh, just finally, Tom, uh, just briefly, in terms, though, of our, our nation's energy security, we understand in the past the reliance that there's been on, you know, natural gas and so on coming from the east. We know how temperamental those pipelines can sometimes be. Don't we, to an extent, need to retain some uh, or, or some capacity to use carbon within the national grid to guard against those prospects? I don't think we need to retain uh, carbon, uh, burning carbon for our power system. I think there may be an argument for some aspects of industry about what they call the hard to abate uh, uh, industries, where we might need to find some way of using carbon, uh, burning carbon in a carbon neutral way, in a net zero way. But I don't think there's any need at all for it in our power system. And again, if you really want to ensure your energy security, then driving bills down by improving the energy efficiency of our notoriously poorly insulated homes is the best way possible. And again, the government's just made a real mess of a very good idea of putting a lot of money into people's insulating people's homes, and it just messed it up in the way it went about it. So it, it's, not, it's not a problem of our energy security as much as our national competence. Indeed. Uh, Tom Burke, great to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you.